everybody. Um, good afternoon. Uh, this is a uh, very exciting for us to be here on this stage today. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, the Blend Institute uh, having accepted our talk because we actually uh, quite late submitted our proposal a couple of weeks after the official deadline. Um, so what are we presenting today? It's an add-on which we have been developing now for eight months. It's called Bullet Constraints Builder. And what is it? Just a moment. It is an add-on for Blender to complement Blender's viewport physics with plausible physical dependencies between rigid bodies. A tool that enables the simulation of collapsing building structures with an accuracy that was not possible in Blender before. That's about the shortening. So, we thought that we are going to um, divide this talk into two parts. I will, in the first 10 to 15 minutes, I will talk very generally about the nature of our development. Kai is then going to, to um, take over in the second half and he will then show some uh, simulations uh, in real time. Uh, especially there's a small house that is built in Blender and he will then in re he let, will let work the, 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 the script on it in real time. Uh, these three images there that you can see on the top, they are like snapshots of a, sim of a simulation we did with a script. Uh, it's actually our last. The, the result of the last script version. And uh, this uh, simulation you will see too within this presentation. But uh, maybe we are going to first present ourselves so that you have an idea who we are and what is our background. Okay. Okay, that's okay. Uh, my name is Oliver Walter. I'm an architect, German architect. I, I'm living in Finland now for about 18 years. And beside my architect's works, I'm uh, very passionately designing LED lighting fixtures that are made from wood. Uh, this is one example of the products that I develop. It's called Pear. And I mention this now especially because uh, Blender has been a very, very active part in the development of this product. Uh, you can see the gears on the left lower side, they are designed with this gear add-on which is in Blender and which was um, uh, designed or uh, written by, by um, uh, Michel Anders. Um, yeah, that's um, I, what I wanted to say, I'm also a very long time Blender user. Hello, my name is Kai Kostak, I'm a 3D artist and animator from Berlin. I'm working as a freelancer and my main field of activity is mainly um, the creation of visualization for architecture and industrial machines. However, uh, the Blender community probably knows me better for my destruction physics uh, experiment, experiments. And um, um, <laughs> here you can see one which uh, shows um, full dynamic fracture system which I have developed um, because I'm also into Python and C uh, programming and um, uh, hopefully this serves as a prototype for a later C implementation um, but this is left to be seen because um, the Blender core is still not sufficient and it is um, subject to a larger redesign in the next month as we have learned on uh, Friday and um, hopefully uh, this will change, or make it possible at least and um, as we all know uh, this uh, can really make interesting futures possible like this one. So, uh, but this is not what we are talking about today we are um, having a more serious background and Oliver will take over now for um, explain what is our research is about. Yes, um, and I have to say that uh, 
Kai is actually the one who is doing the scripting work, the programming work. I'm not really familiar with programming. To me, programming is something like a closed book. <clears throat> so um, uh, I will talk very shortly about the context that our development takes place. Kai and I, we are now employed for the, uh, in the uh, uh, University of Applied Sciences in um, Laurea in Leppavara. Leppavara is a city district very close to Helsinki. <clears throat> Laurea is now taking part in a EU-funded research project. It's a um, project called Inacus. Um, Inacus is a four-year uh, research and development project um, which lasts from 2015 until 2018. It's a consortium of 20 partners from 11 European countries. Uh, the aim of INACUS in a nutshell is developing a set of tools that will improve the effectiveness of uh, research, of search and rescue operations. Those tools will reduce the response time and improve the speed victims can be localized and res rescued. Um, there are 12 uh, specialized working groups within this INACUS project and uh, these groups are working optimized tools uh, that shall support uh, rescue teams in, in catastrophic events. Uh, there are tools like electromagnetic uh, magnetic, uh, and chemical sensors, airborne 3D scans for fast damage assessment, robot mechanisms that penetrate debris, and uh, 3D simu simulation tools for virtual building collapse. And then there's a sophisticated communication network which is combining all those tools with each other to ensure that uh, data transfer is possible very efficiently. The um, working group that Laurea and Kai and I now are involved is a group that um, researches and optimizes the use of 3D software to simulate building collapse. We are uh, in this a group comparing three different uh, simulation methods. Uh, the D discrete element method, which is um, covered uh, by Blender and its integrated bullet physics. Uh, then we have this applied and finite element method. I'm not going to go into detail because it would take a, l a little bit of time to explain really what is the, the difference between these different simulation methods. Um, it's too specific and also quite complicated actually to explain, but I would like to just pick uh, this DEM and AEM, basically they are uh, using the same um, principle uh, that uh, they are um, rigid bodies as the smallest unit which is simulated. And these rigid bodies are in the case of applied element method, they are connected with uh, matrix of springs that you can see in the middle on the right. And uh, they, uh, this um, underlying physics is actually then solved with, with, a, with a stiffness mark text based on um, based on um, differential equations. Uh, the discrete element method, which is now covered uh, with, uh, with blend and bullet, or actually bullet physics, uh, is a method which also uh, handles uh, rigid bodies, but in this case, these rigid bodies are connected with um, single constraints, and the underlying physics uh, is solved with uh, iterative uh, uh, equations or oh, uh, interactive um, process. So, um, within this uh, INACUS project, we are simulating a, a range of buildings. That's the aim to create a kind of a building catalog. Uh, so, you can refer to certain kind of buildings, uh, look at this uh, simulation, and then get some kind of conclusion how these buildings, this kind of deal building, will react on the similar kind of circumstances. This is our first uh, simulation case. It's a high-rise building with 20 stories. And um, uh, this is something that Blender, I think you agree, is, ne is, is not able to, to simulate physically correct at the moment. <coughs> Uh, what we have in Blender, we have this uh, viewport physics, which is actually very nice uh, functionality. Those of you may ask you who has been using or playing around with this uh, bullet physics. 
Okay, quite, quite a lot. So you know that uh, it has actually quite a high fun factor in itself. So you, it's nearly addictive that you can really uh, apply uh, physical active uh, uh, states to, to rigid bodies and then add them in the scene, hundreds and thousands, and uh, arrange them in wild configurations and then uh, trigger some collapse. And it's really fascinating to see. It's really addictive. And there's uh, this image, what you can see, this is from a YouTube channel uh, from uh, Feimek. Uh, he takes this to the extreme, I think he has about 6,000 maximum elements that he has been putting into the scene and it's perfectly visualized. And he's, uh, he's uh, collecting hundreds and thousands, up to a million, even more views within a very short uh, period of time. But this uh, physics, uh, is not really appropriate to be uh, used in really complex building simulations because there are uh, separated rigid bodies and there are no, there's no connection between them. Uh, it just uh, acts with the gravity and with the interaction of the parts with each other. So, but uh, we have investigated a little bit other tools, external tools, and there in fact are two programs uh, which are available which a little bit extend this functionality. The one uh, add-on, it's an add-on, uh, it's called Bullet Constraints Tools and it's a bit irritating because it's very close to the name that we choose. Our name is a bit of an understatement, you will see why soon. Um, and it's, uh, this uh, Bullet Constraints Tool is written by Bashi. I don't know who is actually, what is the name behind it. Um, and then there's another um, tool which is a f a called Fracture Modifier and it's written by Scorpion81. I think his name is uh, Martin Felge. Felke. Uh, this Fracture Modifier is actually a um, separate Blender build. It's not an add-on. And with these uh, tools you have a little bit extended uh, functionality in Blender. So you can easily uh, select a certain amount of uh, rigid bodies and uh, uh, batch connect them with constraints. Uh, and this gives a little bit higher amount of, uh, of, uh, um, of uh, complexity into, into the simulation because all of a sudden there are some, some connections between the rigid bodies established. Um, but it's still not physically ac accurate. There are certain problems because the constraints which are then created, they are, they are uh, not exactly placed. Uh, there's a threshold which is unique for all, all the constraints. There's no differentiation. And um, it's only one, one uh, threshold that is placed, which is always the same. And you have to repeat this process and for different selections of, of elements to get, get differentiated amounts of uh, diversity into it. My God, it's already 12 past. It's going fast. Extremely fast. So maybe I have to go forward a bit faster now. So because it was not really appropriate, these tools that we found, we uh, wrote a new one. Kai wrote a new one, a new add-on. And this add-on allows realistic structural, structural dependencies between building elements such as pillars, walls, beams, slabs, and so forth, uh, by calculating breaking thresholds based on real material properties. So yes, uh, placing the constraints precisely in the middle uh, of the contact surface of elements placing multiple generic constraints per element pair. So back to the uh, simulation case. Um, it's a 20-story building, totally concrete. Then in the middle there's a core, and then the um, uh, pillars are then grouped uh, on the outer facades. And these pillars, are, that's also important, uh, they are diminishing in size over the whole height of the building. They are biggest, more massive in the, in, the, in the ground, and then they are very thin on the top. One, this blue articulated element is a strong beam, a girder. And so, let's play this animation. Is there a talk afterwards immediately? Is there a talk afterwards? Yes. Okay. Let's play. Okay, now it plays. So you can see this is the overview, skeleton, facade. Now the scenario is that, uh, that in the lowest basement uh, floor, there are three pillars in the corner taken off by an explosion. 
now you can just guess what is going to happen. Uh, please, please try to, to, uh, to guess what is happening with this building. This was very surprised to, to us that it's not collapsing. <laughs> and, and the other method, this, a, uh, this um, applied element method, uh, did the same simulation and came to the same result. Now we are, as you see on the right upper corner, there's a text and we are now continuously decreasing the, the um, material strength. And the more the material strength is reduced, the more the, the building is collapsing. I go a little bit faster because I'm afraid that Kai doesn't have time in the end. Doesn't go. Oh. So the material acts more and more brittle the lower the uh, material strength is set. And the, the material strength in the beginning uh, was actually set for concrete. I think it was concrete uh, 30, wasn't it? Okay. Reinforced concrete. Yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe I'll stop here because I think you saw enough. You just have to imagine that there's more and more of this progressive collapse happening over time. You should show the last one. Oh, the, the last one. What was, what was there? I cannot go back now. Sorry. Uh, this is an image which just, because the question comes, how is the accuracy of the simulations? Is it really uh, accurate or not? We are not aiming at absolute 100% uh, accuracy, but... Uh, this on the left-hand side, you see a building which is contact, has collapsed 2011 in Christchurch, New Zealand, and you see very much of similarity between, between these uh, scenarios. The, the, the core stays intact, this is a bit leaning, but still intact, and then the uh, floor slabs are slightly bended, and, but still connected, still connected to the, to the core, which means, uh, which, which, which is of course natural because they are the re reinforcement um, irons connected. So there are three uh, key principles in this our script. Oh, this goes so fast. Accurate constraint placement in the middle of the contact area of two elements, breaking threshold evaluation based on contact area between elements, and placement of multiple constraints per element pair. Uh, this is the first point, accurate constraint placement. The standard uh, bullet uh, in uh, Blender, this viewport integration, places these constraints uh, on the active, on the selected, uh, or then in between of those elements, and it's never exact, it's never on the contact area where it should be. Uh, on the right you see two uh, cases where our script has been placed, placing the constraints exactly in the middle of the contact surfaces. And on the right side, you see still another function of, of this script. It can cluster uh, uh, constraints to one single uh, point in space. This is important because those, those uh, beams that can have, have the possibility to bend, which wouldn't be otherwise possible. Oh, 17, I have to go very fast. I go very fast now. Um, so, Kai, or do you want to just mention these points in your... Yeah, okay, so... Um, this is uh, the second point, one of the key, the second key concept of the script. It's uh, the definition of the breaking threshold because uh, we made some uh, very simple rigs and uh, experiments, and we we found that there's really like a correlation between the threshold and the real physical uh, force in Newton. Um, but there's a formula depending on the um, simulation steps per second that you have in your scene. You have to divide, uh, in order to get the threshold value, the force in Newton by the amount of steps. This is not in any case uh, the case, but in most of the cases of the constraints. Uh, and then on the lower side you see um, the differentiated blue areas. This is the uh, defined uh, contact area, and by this area uh, it is found the threshold by multiplying this area with the strength of the material, in, then again dividing it by the steps amount. So it's, it's uh, very accurate. And this is uh, uh, the third and last concept of this uh, script. It is um, that we are using multiple constraints. The standard is only to use one. Um, and that's the reason why uh, a material has different uh, strength in different directions. You have a concrete, for example, much, much stronger compressive resistance 
uh, but much less tensile uh, resistance. And that means that you cannot deal with only one, one uh, threshold and one constraint. You have, you have to have more. Uh, this is uh, the second uh, last slide now. Uh, this shows uh, the approach that we are placing three separate constraints to a connection between two elements. Uh, the constraint type is generic and we lock the different axes um, uh, and secure them with a, with a breaking threshold, a unique th breaking threshold which represents then the, the according force. And then this com combination you see on the right side, that's actually the, the final composition of constraints. This very quickly, it's a speed thing, because uh, this is very crucial, of course, when you make big animations of big models. Uh, you can see here a comparison between Bashi's script on the left, it's magenta, and then this red one is our, our speed curve. And you see in both cases that there's an exponential uh, um, um, increase in, in rendering time, which lets you assume that it's not reasonable to, to um, simulate, for example, uh, 12,000 elements, because you, you might wait many, many, many hours and, and so on. But you can see also that our script is 10 times faster than Bashi's. Okay, that's actually it. Simulation time. Okay, then let's be quick. I have to switch the display mode. So, so I'm, I'm showing this now in the action, the script. Um, I'm starting, I have only five minutes or so. I'm starting with, um, with a um, classical reinforced concrete building, which is called the Domino House. And yeah. It is slightly prepared. It stands on a platform which is animated by a noise function so that it um, reproduces some kind of earthquake-like motion. And the building itself is consisting of um, rigid bodies only. They are otherwise not prepared. And if I'm now going to select them, the building, and here on the left side you can see the add-on just uh, when you have installed it, it, it should appear like this. And I'm leaving the presets here. They are um, predefined for reinforced concrete. And just building, uh, clicking build to build our actual constraints. It should take only a few seconds. And now I'm moving the uh, new constraints to a different layer. And press bake to simulate the actual new structure. And you can see it happens quite fast. Um, we needed to implement our own bake function because um, we need to monitor the constraints um, because since we have uh, multiple constraints per connection and the, conne uh, the, the, the constraints know, don't know each other and have no knowledge about uh, other constraints in the same connection. We have to monitor them, and if we detect one is detached, all the others of the same uh, connections are uh, detached as well. So otherwise we would um, have to deal with some strange behavior like uh, elements sliding through the air, like on rails, and uh, this is to avoid that. So it should be enough, 500 frames. It should be enough to bring the building to a collapse. And now I'm playing back. And you see, it's just collapsing. So let's go to our actual high-rise building simulation. I have only the baking data here, because it, it otherwise would take really long to load the scene with all constraints. It's like about 50,000 ob objects. It's a pretty hard, tough thing for a blender. So and I'm just playing back this as well because I want to show you how the current 
Blender features can be used even for this research project, like the uh, clipping border tool, because you can now look inside the simulation and you can um, observe where um, air pockets are forming and cavities. And this is important uh, and interesting for uh, search and rescue organizations because they now have a clue where po potential survivors could be found and where they have to search for. Thanks. So the last one is the, our expecta expectations for the future. We want to expand the script uh, to maybe even differentiate more forces and maybe even add more constraints per connections. Uh, so we are so we may be able to simulate even compl more complex materials like steel structures with uh, even complex shapes and not only box-like shapes. And uh, that's for our future that we hope to simulate something like this, a bridge with really complex connections and uh, that's, that's the next step for us. Oh, I think that's it. Thanks for listening. Or Yeah, surprisingly, we are before <laughs> ending. So if you have questions, then please. Questions? Yes? Thank you. Uh, the earthquake you were simulating, um, when the epicenter is under the building, the building does this. And when the epicenter is far away, the building does this. Did you take that into account? It can be uh, taken into account without any problems, yes. In this case, this was just a generic noise function, not an actual earthquake. This, no. uh, In our case, it, it was only two-dimensional. This uh, is a good question, because this uh, reference building in Christchurch, which uh, collapsed in 2011, this is actually one plan that we have that we might uh, model it. In, in Blender, and then we have actually all the data, we have the construction drawings, and we also have the ground movement information, and that was indeed a very strong, because it was just right under Christchurch, there was very heavy uplift, uh, so that would be very interesting to cross-validate our, our software, of course. Other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>